Hey everyone, we've been trying something new at Warp called Fix It Fridays, where we take popular user requests and spend a chunk of engineering time every Friday getting as far as we can on those issues. Thanks to Fix It Fridays, we've shipped a bunch of smaller fixes across the product, and I'm going to walk through a couple of them here. Quick disclaimer, in the video description or caption, we'll clarify the status of each change, what's already shipped, what's in progress, and what may still be a prototype. Now let's get into it. First up, we have session restoration for MCP servers. So Warp now remembers which MCP servers you had running when you closed the app and restores them on relaunch. In this example, I have two MCP servers up, Postgres and Puppeteer. If I close Warp while Postgres is still running and Puppeteer is offline and then reopen Warp, Postgres comes right back up while Puppeteer stays off, exactly matching the state I left it in. If I turn both offline before quitting, then Warp respects that too. So nothing starts automatically when I return. This is great for giving us a persistent and predictable server experience across sessions. Next, you can set Warp as your default terminal on macOS, and this makes it the go-to terminal for scripts or external tools. So here I'm running a .command script that opens NeoVim, and if I've set iTerm as the default terminal, the script opens in iTerm. But when I switch my default to warp and rerun the same script, it now opens cleanly in warp. The third is we've now updated how keyboard shortcuts work for switching between input modes and made them a lot more flexible. So now command I toggles cleanly between agent mode and terminal mode, and pressing escape will return you to auto mode. I used to just spam command I until I got into the mode that I wanted, but now you can set custom key bindings to switch specifically to agent mode versus terminal mode. So here I've configured command I to always enter agent mode and command J to always enter terminal mode. You might use control I or control J if you're on Windows or Linux, and that is all fully customizable. We've also introduced a power user feature where you can set a mode until the end of the block. So for example, with command shift I, I can enter agent mode for just this block, and with command shift J, I can enter terminal mode for just this block. Once this block finishes, warp automatically switches back to my default mode. You can tell that you're in this temporary mode when the light bulb in warp is filled in. Fourth is that we've added a set of curated starter prompts in Warp Drive to help you get started quickly. So these include common workflows like debugging, environment setups, and deployment, and they're designed to be drop-in ready. These are especially useful if you're new to Warp prompts or want to see how power users build their workflows. And you'll find these automatically available when you open up Warp Drive for the first time, no setup required on your part. And finally, we have redesigned tab tooltips to give you way more context at a glance. So here's what happens depending on your tab state. If you haven't renamed your tab, the tab name will just show your current directory. If you have renamed your tab, the tooltip will show the original directory path. If you've started an agent within your tab, the tooltip will show the prompt that you're running. And if that prompt was especially long, we'll automatically truncate the tooltip to keep things clean. It's a really subtle change, but it makes switching tabs, especially across different agents and directories, a lot more informative and usable. And that's it for this week. If you've got other feature requests, bugs, or UI feedback, we're always listening, so drop a comment here or on GitHub or Twitter. You can find all the links to our social media in the description of this video. 